everybody. It's Dr. Jordan Taylor, undergraduate exercise science program director and associate teaching professor at the University of Kansas. This is the second video in a two-part series where I'm discussing hamstring strains. In this video, exercises will be demonstrated that you can perform to bulletproof your hamstrings and prevent hamstring strains from occurring in the first place. So once again, brought in my longtime friend Kyler Reed to demonstrate some strengthening and flexibility exercises that can reduce your risk of sustaining a hamstring strain when they are implemented into your training program and executed consistently over time. So Kyler was a member of the Nebraska Cornhuskers football team where he played tight end between 2008 and 2012. He also spent time playing with several NFL and indoor football teams. In addition, Kyler has experience as an assistant football coach and strength and conditioning coach at Highland Community College. All right, so before we get into demonstrating some of these uh, glute, hamstring, abdominal strengthening exercises, some of the flexibility stuff, uh, just personally, have you ever suffered a hamstring strain in your uh, playing career? <laughs> yeah, I had multiple hamstring strains going all the way back to high school track. And um, it was something I dealt with through college and um, even on my final pro day before going to the NFL, I, I pulled it uh, running an out route. So yeah, plenty of experience <laughs> dealing with that injury. It's not fun. I'm going to test the same thing. I know I started having issues when I was playing indoor football. I think I pulled each hamstring in my career probably five or six times. And it literally feels like you've been shot or stabbed in the back of the leg when you're running. So a lot of people are like, oh, it's just a hamstring strain. It's like, no, if you haven't had one, Believe me, you'll know when you do, and it can really sideline you for, for a while, depending on the severity of injury. Speaking of which, kind of brings me to the next question. So with some of those injuries, you know, there's different grades, grade one, grade two, grade three. Obviously, grade three is most severe. Grade one is more mild. You know, how long did it take you to recover and really get back on the field with some of those injuries? Well, in Nebraska, though, they were really trying to, you know, get you back on the field. So the timeline was always as short as possible. And if they could get you practicing within three weeks, um, they would try to get it. They didn't, I mean, there was a, my junior year, I was out there playing uh, with a, a rubber band attached to <laughs> the top and bottom, taped on just to give a little extra support. Assistance. Um, yeah. Generally for me, I felt like six to eight weeks. If I had yeah. the time to um, say it was the summer or something where yeah. I wasn't having to play, yeah. um, six to eight weeks would be the best amount of time. But you know, in the athletic department, games need to be won. Other people are banged up. You got to get out there and play. Yeah. So they were looking. And that's the tricky thing is that hamstrings are very tricky injuries. So the pain can be gone. All the inflammation is subsided. You're starting to get into the, the, late, the middle to late stages of healing. And you feel like it's good to go. But just because you don't have pain doesn't mean it's ready. And that's really when you're at risk of re-injuring it is if you go back too soon. And, it, and I can think back to when I played, I know you almost have this kind of mental, you're, it's constantly on your mind. Like you're out there running routes, you're sprinting, whatever, changing direction. You think, man, it's going to go, it's going to go. And then it, it, it just, it, it's not fun because you're mentally thinking yeah, about it. it. Can you relate a, to that? Yeah, it becomes a mental battle. You're always worried and uh, you get a little fatigued and you're like, man, it, it really slows you down. I remember when I was in Jacksonville, I was recovered, but... I'd be running down on kickoff just like, please don't go, please don't go. And of course, the <laughs> tight end coach had my time uh, come next meeting. I'm Why getting, are you sandbagging it? Yeah, You're getting, taking forever to get down there. I'm getting yelled at because <laughs> I didn't get down there in 3.9 seconds. I got down there in 4.2 seconds. But that's because I was worried it was going to go again. Yeah. Once I got over that fear, you know. It and was, you're fighting for a roster spot, so you yeah. want to be out there. Yeah, so. All right. Um, you ready to get moving and demonstrating these uh, hamstring injury prevention exercises? Sure am. All righty. We're going to go through first some exercises to strengthen gluteus maximus, um, also gluteus medius minimus, those hip abductors. Again, a lot of times the reason why people have hamstring strains is because their posterior is weak, right? The glutes are weak, so we want to focus strengthening those. All right, and then we're going to move into some hamstring strengthening exercises and also some abdominal strengthening. That's important for controlling uh, pelvic tilt. Uh, then we'll end up with some uh, flexibility exercises. So first thing I want to show is uh, kettlebell swings. Now, 
Kyler's not doing these with a kettlebell. Here's, here's a kettlebell because <laughs> I don't have one that's big enough for his hands and that's sufficient weight and sufficient size. So if you don't have a kettlebell, you can do these with a dumbbell, all right? So what we're doing is we'll go with, uh, you know, wherever you're comfortable with the feet, maybe, maybe a little narrower. Yep, he's slightly externally rotated with the toes. What we want to do for setup for the kettlebell swing is this is a hip hinge exercise, right? Or dumbbell swing, we'll call it in this case. So we're going to flex the knees, right? Chest up nice and tall, all right? And then we're going to work on hinging at the hips, all right? So hips have got to go back, right? Knee angle is going to stay constant. So you can start with the dumbbell in front of you, if you'd like, or you can start underneath, wherever. But you're going to hinge at the hips, right? Push your hips back. And then you're going to squeeze the glutes, push the hips forward, right? So you're extending at the hips, but really the knee angle is staying constant, right? So it's going to look like this, OK? So it's a hip hinge movement, all right? So you can go ahead and demonstrate a few of these dumbbell or kettlebell swings. So again, I'm looking at the side, you can see there's, there's going to be a little bend in the knee, but you're not really flexing and extending at the knee, right? So we're going into shoulder flexion. He's keeping his back nice and flat. Do a couple more forward. See how his hips, he's driving his hips back and then squeezing the glutes forward or I say squeezing the glutes to drive his pelvis and hips forward. So typically we would do about 15 to 20 of those. I'm kind of using this as more of like a, a sport specific or, or more a, a specific warm up, not sport specific, but specific warm up before we get into some of the heavier loaded stuff and the more difficult exercises. So again, just working on that hip hinge movement. Typically do these with a lighter weight, lighter load. Um, working on some muscular strength, but also muscular and muscular endurance, 15 to 20 reps. Um, this isn't something you're going to load heavy like an RDL or a, you know, um, a squat or a deadlift or some of the other exercises that we're going to demonstrate. All right, so, you know, just finished up with the uh, kettlebell or dumbbell swings, which obviously that's training the hip extensors, the glutes, the hamstrings. Now we're moving on to frog pumps. All right, so these are a great exercise, again, for targeting the gluteus maximus. So to get into this position, obviously, get, we got Kyler here. He's laying supine. All right, you're going to abduct and externally rotate the legs, which you see he has already positioned them correctly. The feet are together, all right? The next thing you want to cue your athlete or whoever you're working with is to contract the abdominals, which is going to help to posteriorly rotate the pelvis, right? And think about rotating. The pelvis is like a bucket. You're rotating that posteriorly or backward, and the tailbone is coming underneath you, right? So kind of show that again. Just show the tilt, right? So here he's kind of anteriorly tilted. Now contract the abs. See how he's tucking his pelvis underneath him. You want to start there, right? And then put your arms out to your side. Palms face on the floor. All right. Now squeeze the glutes together and raise your pelvis off the ground, right? You can see how there's a nice line between his greater trochanter of his hip, so the side of his hip and his shoulder, and back down. So go ahead and just knock out, you know, maybe 15 of those. <laughs> we'll do 10. I would, I would prescribe 15 of them. Let's just do 10, okay? We've got to kind of get you warmed up and get those glutes activated before we move on to some of the more challenging stuff, all right? Even though this is challenging in itself, but some of the more loaded exercises. And I lost count. <laughs> we'll do one more. One more. One more is good. And that's the frog pump. All right, so after the frog pumps, next we've got seated banded Hip abduction, that's abduction. That's when the legs or the hips are moving away from midline, all right? And what that's going to train as he brings his knees away from the midline is the hip abductor muscles, right? So these are the um, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus. You can feel them contract just by bringing your leg out to the side. 
Um, you can feel them there on, on kind of the side of your hip. So these are important for stabilization. If they're strong, they're going to help stabilize the pelvis in the frontal or coronal plane. You know, if someone has weak hip abductors, right? I don't know if, hopefully you can see this, but if they stand on one leg and the contralateral pelvis drops, you see how at the peak of my pelvis, the hips should be level, but if their hip drops like that, that means the hip abductor on the stance leg is weak, right? So if they move the left leg, I'm standing on my right leg, if the left leg goes into hip flexion, you should see the, the pelvis being level. If it drops, that's a sign that on the stance leg, those hip abductor muscles are weak, right? This can contribute to lack of stability, lack of lumbo-pelvic control when sprinting, uh, walking, and it makes you more susceptible to hamstring injuries, all right? So you want to have strong hip abductor muscles. These are often overlooked. Everybody trains the gluteus maximus, the big muscle back here, doing RDLs and sumo squats and, and other exercises, but we forget about these uh, abductor muscles, right? The glute med and the glute minimus, okay? So Kyler's got a nice tall posture here. Flex at the knee at 90 degrees, okay? All he's going to do here is got this resistance band, right, wrapped around the leg. He's just going to abduct the thighs, spread apart, right, and then back together, right? So go ahead and knock out some of those just to demonstrate. Typically, I would prescribe or have, you know, an athlete um, as kind of part of their specific warm-up do, you know, probably two or three sets of 20 of these and also utilizing different torso angles. So do just a couple more to demonstrate. Again, we would typically do, like I said, 15 to 20. Now then, we're gonna just tilt the torso back a little bit, so we're opening up the hip angle here, so there's less hip flexion, and proceed with the abduction. So just a little different torso angle. One more. Then now, we're going to lean forward more, so pitch the torso Forward, now we've got a more acute angle of hip flexion here. Again, chest up, looking straight ahead. Continue with your abduction. So knock out just, just five reps to demonstrate. Good. So again, strengthen those hip abductors. They're often weak and overlooked. Next exercise we're going to talk about, and this is a great one. I highly recommend it for anybody that's looking to strengthen their glutes. Big fan of it is the barbell hip thrust. Okay, so let's talk about the setup position. First, you're going to need a nice stable bench. And you see how he's not at the end of the bench. He doesn't have his, his back, upper back position down here. It's on the broad side of the bench. So upper back, you know, shoulder blades on there. Okay. You can see how he's got the barbell rolled into basically, um, should be just above your pubic bone. Is that where you kind of feel it at? Yep. Just above that pubic bone. Kind of in the natural crease of your hips, okay? That's where you want it. Now, you can, I should have given you a, a pad to make it feel more comfortable. You can put a, like a barbell pad there just so, you know, you're not getting that compressive force from the bar on your hips, but you think you'll be okay without, without a pad, okay. So then we're going to go ahead and flex the knees, flex the hips. So you can see this is the starting position. Oh, you don't have to do one yet. Let's just show the starting position. So go back down. So, so we're starting here. Knees flexed, hips flexed. All right, digging the upper back into the bench. He's got a pronated grip. So again, palms are facing down just outside of his hips. Let's talk about foot placement. So. You can do about hip width, maybe a little wider shoulder width, slightly externally rotate the toes, right? Remember the glutes not only are hip extensors, which is the motion that's occurring as he drives his pelvis upward in this lift, that's going into hip extension. The glutes also are responsible for, for some hip external rotation, okay? So, which you see, um, he, he's slightly externally rotated here with um, the, the thigh out and the, and the uh, toes pointing away, okay? All right, so let's just show the, the upward movement phase. The main thing is you want to really, again, contract those abs. That's going to help posteriorly tilt the pelvis. That's another function of the gluteus maximus. You think of the pelvis as like a bucket. I'm exaggerating, but here I'm in anterior tilt. 
if I squeeze my glutes, my pelvis rotates under me like a bucket of water, right? So that water would be spilling backwards, right? If I go anterior tilt, it, f it spills forward. But again, tighten the abs. The abs pull up on the pubic bone and squeeze the glutes, and that helps to posteriorly tilt the pelvis. We're wanting to focus on posterior pelvic tilt at the top of this range of motion. So as he's moving into hip extension, once he gets closer to the top and his hips are in line with his knees and his shoulders, right? When you see the hips, uh, the hips, the knees, and the shoulders all in line, you really want to focus on, again, posteriorly rotating the, the pelvis, okay? Squeezing those glutes, all right? All right, so you want to demonstrate the upward movement phase now that we've kind of talked about that. So again, that's hip extension right there. So back down, a couple more. So again, this isn't working the knee extensor so much the quads because the knee is staying in flexion. The knee's flexed. So back down. So again, drive up, posteriorly tilt at the top. Back down. And pause just a second. And you see how he's kind of keeping his chin tucked down? That's good. You know, you don't really want to have your head back when you're doing these because then it could cause your, you know, your thoracic spine to become more extended then your lumbar spine to become extended. And then if the spine is extended and you're also trying to posteriorly tilt, it's just, it's just not good mechanics, okay? So again, he's kind of keeping his chin tucked a little bit. Do a few more reps. Drive those hips up into extension, back down. One more. And tilt the pelvis at the top posteriorly, good. And there you've got your barbell glute thrust. Great glute exercise for strengthening those muscles that are often weak. All right, so next exercise we have for strengthening the hip extensors. Again, that's the gluteus maximus, the hamstrings, which are the semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and the long head of the biceps femoris. The short head of the biceps femoris does not act to extend the hips, but the long head does because the long head crosses the, the hip and attaches to the ischial tuberosity, which is that bone right under your butt cheek. All right, so we're going to do Romanian deadlifts next. So you want to start with the bar in the rack. You don't start from the floor like you do a traditional deadlift or a sumo deadlift. You start with it in the rack. So go ahead and grab the bar just outside of your thighs, pronated grip, right? So palms are facing basically behind you. So step forward, a couple steps. Now I typically like a, a stance width that you're gonna feel comfortable vertical jumping at. So whatever your vertical jump stance width, whatever that is, whatever you feel comfortable at, all right? So again, this is a hip hinge movement. You want to keep the bar as close to your body at all times, all right? So starting with a nice tall chest, you're going to hinge at the hips. So push the butt back and you've got loose knees, right? So meaning the knees are going to be, remain slightly flexed the entire time. So keep your knees slightly flexed the whole time. Maintain that knee angle and drive the butt back, okay? So again, there's the eccentric phase, then concentric as he rises back up. So as he rises up here, the hip extensors, glutes, hamstrings are going to contract to bring him into hip, hip extension. And then they're lengthening on the downward phase. So as he goes down, the glutes and hamstrings are lengthening and controlling the load eccentrically, right? So just a couple more. Eccentric loading here, hamstrings are lengthening under tension, glutes are lengthening out as he controls the bar down and keeps it close to his body. One more, I want to show one more thing, <laughs> if you got it in you. Again, keeping chest up at the bottom and go to just below the knee so the back is neutral and flat, okay? So just below the knee, let's do one more <laughs> if you can do it. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. All right, so just below the knee, chest up, back stays nice and ne neutral and flat. Okay, you can rack it. All right, so remember, these are great because they strengthen the hamstrings both eccentrically and concentrically, okay? So hamstring injuries often occur in the eccentric phase. So like at the end of a stride, right, as, as the, the terminal swing phase, they call it. So as, the, as you're hip flexing and bringing the leg forward, that hamstring is going to contract eccentrically or lengthen a little bit under tension to prevent the lower leg from swinging out. That's a lot of times where injuries occur. Also at the initial part of the stance phase when the foot lands on the ground and you're getting ready to drive off of it, again, you're, you're going from kind of an eccentric contraction to now a concentric where the hamstrings have got to help extend the leg and the hip back. So a lot of times it's the end of the swing phase where hamstring injuries occur and that initial ground contact in the stance phase. All right, and so 
RDLs, again, great for strengthening glutes and, and eccentric muscle actions there of the, of the hip extensors, okay? All right, so before I get into this next exercise, something I forgot to mention with the barbell glute thrust and the RDL, as far as loading and, and the rep range for that, I generally recommend using a weight um, on the bar where you can complete between 5 and 12 reps. So obviously a lighter load, you're going to be able to complete 10, 11, 12 reps. A heavier load, 5 to 6. Okay, so loads in that rep range of 5 to 12 with the barbell glute thrust and the Romanian deadlift. Now what we're moving into next is going to be the um, basically leg press kickback. All right, so this leg press machine is older. I, I kind of don't like how it's designed, but you're going to get the gist of it by seeing Kyler perform this exercise. So this is a leg press kickback. Typically looking at loading this, you know, 8 to 12 reps, again, moderate weight. Um, so what we're focusing on, again, is hip extension, which the gluteus maximus does, right? So he's starting here, the starting position. Um, you don't have to do one yet, but knee is flexed. With the knee in flexion here, Okay, yeah, and this one will stay off. He's going to be pushing with the left. But with this knee in flexion here, what this does is it shortens the hamstring, okay? Because the hamstring is a knee flexor. With the hamstring shortened because the knee is flexed, this creates what's called active insufficiency, all right? So there's something called the link ten tension relationship with muscles. Muscles produce optimal forces at specific link lengths, usually just longer than their resting length. If a muscle is too elongated or shortened, it can't produce as much force. So here, again with the knee flex, the hamstring is a bit shortened. So now what that's going to do, it creates active insufficiency of the hamstring. The hamstring cannot contribute as much force. So the glute is really going to have to activate and produce the force necessary for him to perform this kickback. Okay, because that hamstring is at a suboptimal length. It's shortened. Okay, so now you know, he's got some slight hip flexion here. Okay, it's going to lengthen the glute out a little bit, put it in a more optimal position. Now he's going to contract that glute, push through the heel, and drive that, um, drive the leg press back. Okay, so again, going into hip extension. Do one more, and then we're going to tweak this a second. Come back down. All right, now. Externally rotate your foot. So put your toe, point your toe away slightly. Again, the glutes are external rotators. Now do a couple reps like that and tell me the difference. If you need to, you can even externally rotate it a little bit more. Can you feel the difference? Mm -hmm. Does it feel like your glute is activating more just with that? Yeah, with that slight external rotation of the foot. Oh yeah, a lot more. Yeah. So again, just tweaking it a little bit, another great glute exercise. All right, so another thing I want to mention, I keep thinking of things as we're going through these exercises is, you know, I mentioned loading. You want to, for most of these exercises, you want loads between, uh, loads where you can perform between 5 and 12 reps per set, okay? Now, the number of sets to perform, typically two to four sets of each of these exercises a um, couple times a week. Um, now. You don't have to perform all these glute exercises we're showing today in a lower body workout. Again, just a couple. Just pick a couple to perform a couple times a week. All right, and you should be good to go, all right? All right, so the next one is dumbbell walking zigzag lunges, or some people call them like a skater lunge. So Kyler's going to go ahead and pick up the dumbbells, stand up nice and tall, all right? And then instead of stepping just straight forward like a, a, a regular walking lunge, he's going to kind of abduct his hip and thigh out to the side. So he is moving forward in the sagittal plane, but also a little bit here in the coronal or frontal plane, okay? So this is gonna help to activate the hip abductors and adductor muscles, the outer thigh and inner thigh muscles to stabilize him when he's lunging in this zigzag pattern, okay? So let's go ahead and demonstrate this, Kyler. So go ahead, see how he's kind of stepping out and not necessarily straight forward. Now he is keeping his torso nice and upright and kind of keeping those hips pointed forward. So if I look at his ASIS, his anterior superior lat spine, which is his hip bone, the top of the hips here, I'm seeing those pointed forward, okay? All right, one more. 
Again, another good exercise for the hip extensors, the, also the inner and outer thigh muscles as well, adductors and abductors. So again, glutes, you're also getting some quadriceps work in there as well. So a good general, uh, another exercise that you can perform. Okay, so next exercise is going to be a body weight exercise. So typically this is higher reps per set. So, you know, I have down my chart here, um, you know, 15 to 20 reps. So really this is going to help work on some more muscular endurance of, of the glutes, which is important as well as strength. So you can do two to four sets of these. So this is an incline bench reverse hyperextension. Incline bench reverse hyperextension. I don't have a uh, glute hamstring gastroc machine to... Uh, perform this exercise on. Uh, so I'm getting creative with the incline uh, bench and we're going to go and have Kyler demonstrate this exercise. So he's going to lie on the bench. Again, flat back. The top of the bench should be hitting the crease of his hips. All right. So now start with your hips in flexion. So go ahead and let your legs drop down. Knee is in flexion. Now you're going to go ahead and contract the glutes, squeeze and extend up, okay? So again, this is a reverse hyperextension, okay? So again, we're keeping that hamstring shortened in active insufficiency so that the, this is targeting the glutes more and then driving those heels up towards the ceiling. So again, just a couple more to demonstrate. Maybe one more and we're good. All right, the next exercise we've got is a seated hamstring curl. Okay, so sitting up nice and tall, hips are in flexion, knees extended. The main thing you want to watch out here for is that because you're going to be flexing at the knee and bending at the knee, the knee should be aligned with the machine's axis of rotation, so where it's rotating. The pad will be just below the calves. Again, the hamstrings are not only important for hip extension with the glutes. The glutes are the primary hip extensor. The hamstrings help extend the hip. They're, a, they're synergists. But the hamstrings have a, a primary function of flexing the knee. So that's why we're strengthening that. Okay, so go ahead and knock out a few hamstring curls here. Again, yep, dorsiflexing the ankles. Again, hamstrings are responsible concentrically for when they shorten for flexing the knee and then they're going to resist during the eccentric phase, the knee going into extension. Now you can progress this and make it more difficult by bilaterally use both legs to do the concentric phase, but then just resist it up with one leg. There you go, right? So now that's giving a lot of your, e your eccentric uh, hamstring contraction during this phase, there's going to be a lot of load applied to it when you just use one leg, okay? And the reason you can you can always produce more force during the eccentric phase when his knee is extending out. You can always produce more force eccentrically than concentrically, so that's why you can just use one leg, okay? Versus you're not going to be able to produce as much force in the concentric, okay? But again, way you can progress that, make that a more difficult exercise, use both legs during the concentric, one more demonstration, both legs concentric, and then one leg during the eccentric, and then you're just alternating in that eccentric phase with each leg, okay? Because again, training that eccentric phase is important. It's often overlooked. So I forgot to mention on the leg curl that we just did, you know, stick to a rep range of eight to 12 on that exercise, two to four sets. The next hamstring exercise we're moving into is the stability ball leg curl. So again, this is training knee flexion, okay? So go ahead and what you're gonna do is tighten your core, posteriorly tilt your pelvis, Raise your hips up off the ground. All right, so the knees, hips, and shoulders are in alignment. Now you're going to use that hamstring muscle, dig into the ball with the heels, and flex at the knee, okay? And then slowly resist that uh, knee going back into extension, okay? So slowly resist going back into extension. That's training the eccentric phase. Now concentric, hamstring shortens. Now it's lengthening, you're resisting the eccentric phase. You can progress this by doing one leg at a time. So maybe try doing one leg now. There you go, makes it more difficult, right? And then maybe a couple on the other leg. And one more. And there you have it, that's the stability ball leg curl. All right, so the next exercise is the Nordic curl. 
This is great for strengthening the hamstrings in the eccentric phase. Again, an eccentric muscle contraction is when the hamstring is lengthening, all right? And that's commonly when the hamstring is injured. So you want to train the eccentric phase uh, to prevent injuries, right? Okay? So again, you know, think about what you're going to see here is as he's lowering and resisting his torso to the ground, the hamstring is lengthening out and helping resist, you know, his torso from basically crashing into the ground from the pull of gravity, okay? So you've got to, you can do this with a partner, find something stable to hook your feet underneath. But again, I'm going to really support, really push down on his legs. He's going to slowly fall forward and then catch himself, all right, and then come back up. Okay, so we're training the eccentric phase, all right. So slowly fall forward, land, and then come back up. So as he's falling towards the ground, take a break. As he's falling towards the ground, those hamstrings are lengthening out and resisting the force of gravity pulling him down. Now, if you look at his hip angle, I couldn't see where, where it was at from behind, but you can slightly flex at the hips, right? Just slightly, all right? It's gonna lengthen the hamstring a little bit when you're flexing at the hips. All right, again, just do a couple more. And as you get stronger, you'll be able to go closer to the ground before you actually have to catch yourself. Good, all right. I'd recommend just doing the first week of doing these only like two sets of five and then you can progress it as you get stronger, okay? So again, very great exercise. In fact, this has been shown if, if in injury prevention programs. Doing the Nordic curl, incorporating that into a, a program reduces the risk of hamstring injury by 51% in athletes, okay? So this is important to do for that eccentric hamstring strengthening. So this next exercise, you've seen the glute strengthening, you've seen the hamstring strengthening. Both of those are very important for hamstring injury prevention. We also need strong abdominal muscles. And the reason why is this. A lot of times if somebody has weak abs and weak glutes, you'll see when they walk, they're in anterior pelvic tilt, right? And I mentioned this earlier. So the, the butt is kind of hiked up in the back. And if you think of the pelvis as a bucket, it's rotated forward and you could think of water spilling forward. What we want is stronger abs because they're connected to the pubic bone and the rib cage and the ziphoid process, this kind of tip of your sternum. So the rectus abdominis runs from the rib cage and, and xiphoid process down to the pubic bone. So if we strengthen the rectus abdominis, that pulls up on the pubic bone, the front of the pelvis or the front of the bucket, and helps tilt it back. And then also by strengthening the glutes and hamstrings using the exercises we've seen before, that's going to help to posteriorly rotate that pelvis so your athlete or client has the correct pelvic tilt, right? A lot of times people with poor running mechanics, poor sprint mechanics, they may have excessive backside mechanics if they have anterior, anterior pelvic tilt, which means if they have weak glutes and weak abs, they spend a significant time during the uh, sprint phase with the leg behind them, the pelvis tilted anteriorly. And if the leg is spending a significant, a significant amount of time behind the body, they generally are having longer, greater ground, ground contact times and they'll have more trouble punching the knee forward into that swing phase, right? Because it's stuck way out here behind the body. So you've got this longer lever to drive forward and swing, okay? So, Pelvic tilt can affect sprint mechanics, so we want to correct that by not only strengthening the glutes and hamstrings, but also the abs. All right, so to do this exercise, it's just a partner-assisted med ball crunch. So Kyler's going to crunch up, again using the rectus abdominis, drive the lumbar spine into the ground and posteriorly tilt the pelvis, like we've mentioned on other exercises. So again, it's not a huge range of motion, but it's really targeting that rectus abdominis. Again, so posteriorly tilt pelvis. Yep, up. Now you can progress this and make it more difficult by bringing the legs off the ground or the feet off the ground. With the feet off the ground, you're a little more unstable. So it can make it a little more challenging. So do a couple here. Let's do three more. And three, good. So that's the partner assisted med ball crunch. So the next abdominal strengthening exercise that we're going to do is the reverse crunch swiper. So again, we're starting here, hips flexed, knees flexed, arms at the side. He's going to really contract and squeeze the abdominals. That's going to posteriorly tilt the pelvis. 
after his butt clears the ground, he's going to swipe his hands underneath his butt on the floor, okay? So again, this is the reverse crunch hyper. Now what you don't want to do is, on this rep, like extend your knees out. You don't want to do this, like extend them all the way out, because then that's going to create some, an increased lordotic curve on the spine. So we don't want that. So it's just you're keeping the knee flexed the whole time. You're just using the abs to crunch and then swipe underneath, right? So a couple more of those. Very simple, kind of short range of motion, but great ab exercise. So next exercise is the Russian twist, okay? So for this position, flex at the knee, get your feet flat on the floor, lean back slightly, but keep your chest up, all right? What you don't want to do when you're twisting is just tap the ball side to side. You actually want to think of turning your chest with the ball, right? So your thoracic spine is, is rotating right and left, right? So you're not just tapping the ball side to side. These are not Russian taps, they're Russian twists, okay? You can make this easier by holding the ball closer to the body. You can make it more difficult by holding the ball further away because you have a longer moment arm if the ball's further away. So maybe start out with it close to the body. So do it easy, as close to the body first. Yep, and rotate, rotate. So do a couple more that way. One more. Now extend the arms out. This is more challenging, right? And you can probably feel the difference. Your thoracic spine mobility is, Left. you feel, yeah, tight through there. Now, the other way you can progress it, take a break, is you can raise the heels off the ground, okay? So again, same position, but raise the heels off the ground. Now you're a little more unstable. Again, this is working the external and internal obliques on the sides. So when he rotates to the left and then back to the right, those oblique muscles are engaging, okay? The external oblique rotates the spine to the right along with the internal oblique. I say that right. Right external oblique rotates left. Left external oblique rotates right. Right internal oblique to the right. Left internal oblique to the left. But either way, the obliques are working to produce that twisting motion, okay? All right, now we're getting into some stretching exercises, right? So it's important for hamstring injury prevention, strengthen the glutes, strengthen the abdominals, strengthen the hamstrings, especially the hamstrings eccentrically, but we want to do some stretching too, right? So this stretch is a kneeling hip flexor stretch, okay? So it's going to really stretch the iliopsoas. Now you've got to do this with proper technique, and the way to do this is to upright, nice and tall, squeeze the glute, posteriorly tilt the pelvis, right? Now translate the hips forward, shift your weight forward, okay? And just hold that. You can hold that for 30 seconds, or you can kind of do, make it more dynamic. So start back, squeeze the glute, translate the hips forward, and then go back. Posteriorly tilt, squeezing the glute, translating forward, right? So that's gonna stretch, in this case, his left hip flexor, okay? That, muscle on the anterior part of the hip, and then you would switch legs and repeat. So Kyler's setting up here, prone. We've got the banded quadricep stretch that we're going to do. Again, stretching out the front of the thigh. A lot of people deal with tight quads. So again, he's just creating tension on the band, pulling um, forward over his head. As you can see, he's putting his leg into knee flexion, and it's stretching the quad, the anterior um, part of the thigh, anterior thigh muscle. So you'd want to hold this for about 30 seconds. Again, do a couple sets of this stretch for each leg, all right? Last stretch, we've shown a lot of stuff today. So banded hamstring stretch. So lying supine, right? Again, pulling down on the foot, creating tension here, trying to keep that knee extended, stretching those hamstring muscles. Again, hold this for about 30 seconds. You can do two to four sets of this. Again, it's another important part of your uh, hamstring injury prevention program. So having strong glutes, hamstrings, and abdominal muscles, as well as good quadriceps, hip flexor, and hamstring flexibility are critical factors for hamstring injury prevention. Performing the exercises demonstrated in this video 
will help to bulletproof your hamstrings and decrease the likelihood of you sustaining a hamstring strain. It's important to note that you don't have to do all the exercises shown here today on your lower body training days, but just pick two glute, two hamstrings, and two abdominal focus strengthening exercises and perform them twice per week with at least 48 to 72 hours rest between training sessions that are targeting those muscle groups. Also do the static stretches after each of your workout. Well, Kyler, I'm sure your hamstrings, glutes are on fire. How can people contact you if they have uh, questions about football, injury prevention, or just strength training and conditioning in general? You can find me on Instagram at kspeed25, and I'm also on Twitter, uh, although not as active on Twitter, but that would be kspeed with four E's, 25. All right, well, thanks for coming in. And if you have questions about the KU Exercise Science Program, you can contact me via email. It's jtaylor at ku.edu or by phone 913-897-8516. Thanks for watching.